I mean, dude. Look at that claw. Look at that. That's my fist. Maine is a coastal state situated in the northeast part of the country. It's known for coastal views, cold Atlantic winters, and killer crustaceans. Welcome back to another episode of Cooking the States where we cook a famous dish from a different state in every episode in an attempt to better understand the true identity of American food. I was super thrown off when I found out that the pine tree state wasn't called the lobster state, considering when we think of Maine, many of us Americans think of lobster, whether we're hungry or not. It doesn't matter. What does matter is that Maine and the surrounding area is responsible for bestowing us with one of the best sandwiches known to man. It's super decadent, uses a luxury ingredient, yet it's humble at the same time. That's right, I'm talking about the lobster roll. In typical fashion, we're making it all from scratch. Starting, of course, with the oh-so-important New England Top Split Bun, or uh, roll. These Top Split Buns are sort of like the elite hot dog bun. I went with something almost between a mixture between milk bread and brioche. It's buttery, it's supple, and it's going to toast up great later in the process, you'll see. <laughs> to the bowl of a stand mixer, add in the warm milk, sugars, and active dry yeast. Let that sit out for a couple minutes to get nice and active while you sift together the bread flour, milk powder, and potato flour. Once the yeast is bubbly, add in the sifted dry ingredients right on top there, then attach the dough hook and knead on medium speed until the dough forms into a homogeneous blob. Incrementally drop your cubed unsalted butter into the dough, waiting until the previous pieces have fully blended into the mix. Once all of the butter is incorporated, continue running the machine until the dough is elastic enough to pass the window test, meaning that you can spread it thin enough for light to pass through without the dough tearing on you. Now add the salt in and knead for another minute or two just to kind of mix that in, then form the dough into a nice tight ball, cover and let it rest out at room temperature for about an hour or until doubled in size. Alright, now plop the dough onto a clean work surface, and there's a lot of fat in this dough so you're likely not going to need any flour. Deflate the dough and divide it into five equal pieces. Now shape the dough into tight little circles by making a cage with your hand and using surface tension sort of on the bench on your work surface to pull each little piece into a nice toyed ball. Let the balls rest for about five minutes covered, which is going to make them easier to shape. All right, now take each ball one at a time and flatten it into a horizontal oval. Use the tips of your fingers to pull the top of the dough over itself to form a long bun-shaped log. If need be, pinch that dough seam closed, then rinse and repeat with the remaining dough portions, placing each on a parchment-lined sheet tray spaced out about a third of an inch away from one another. Now just brush them with a light coating of egg wash and plop them aside to rest. You can just leave these uncovered. They're going to stay moist from the egg wash. 30 minutes later, you're going to do two things. One, preheat the oven to 400 degrees. Fahrenheit to allow it to charge with heat and get super hot. Two, brush the rolls with egg wash one more time, then let them rest for another 30 minutes. Bake the rolls for 20 to 22 minutes or until the internal temperature reads 190 to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Now is the time to exercise patience, my friend. Allow these rolls to rest for at least 15 minutes before slicing, just to ensure a perfectly supple lobster roll worthy roll. After they've rested, it's T T T. Square off the outer rolls of the loaf, then pull them apart. See that squishiness? That's what we're going there. We want a nice golden brown loaf with a crust, really soft and supple on the inside, gonna be perfect for sandwiches. Liberally spread tempered butter on both sides of the rolls and toast them over medium heat until GB. Golden brown. A family friend of mine who spent a lot of time in Maine was kind enough to hand over a very old recipe for cooking lobster. So out of respect for the great state of Maine and the way they do things up there, I figured I'd follow it. With a few of my own tweaks, of course. Now there are many, many ways to get this done. Some people boil lobsters, others steam. Today we're gonna do a little bit of both, sort of. You might call it stoil. That's a big boy! To a very large stock pot, add two or three bottles of light beer, bay leaves, black peppercorns, Old Bay seasoning, the juice of a lemon, a small pinch of salt, a few cloves of garlic, then bring that all up to a simmer. By the end of it, there should be enough liquid to come up the pot about two or three inches. Now grab your lobsters, and please keep them as cold as possible before cooking to ensure that they're borderline knocked out before they go into the pot. They're sleeping. Easy. 
these thing. I mean, dude. Imagine getting hooked with this thing. Mike Tyson style, dude. Look at that. Damn. Maine does not play, man. They have the best lobsters on the planet. Honestly, Larry ain't got nothing on this guy. Okay, you can kind of see what I mean here when I say stoil, right? Stoiling. We're not quite boiling, we're not quite steaming. It's kind of a fun, quirky technique because you still get the flavor from that simmering liquid, but you're using mostly steam to cook these lobsters through, which is great because that lobster flavor stays in the meat rather than leaching out into boiling water. Stoil the lobsters for about 9 minutes per pound, then add an additional 3 to 4 minutes per pound after that. <laughs> Once bright red and cooked through, shock the lobsters in an ice bath to choke the heat and ensure that they don't overcook, giving us gnarly, rubbery meat. We don't want that, no bueno. Once the lobsters are cool enough to handle, gear up. I like to use cutting gloves as a protective base layer than a pair of rubber gloves to keep the cutting gloves clean. I have a fair amount of experience cracking crab and lobster and found that this setup is a lot easier than going bare hand with a kitchen towel, and a lot safer. To fabricate the lobsters, start by twisting off the claws and tail. Then pluck off the little legs, and don't skip out on this, there's a lot of good meat in those. Remove the shell from the body by pulling it upwards. There are little morsels of meat in small cavities all along the body there. Just be careful not to mistake the gills for meat, those are not edible. I want meat. Don't, uh, don't do that. Usually when the lobsters are smaller and a little more soft shelled, you can use a fork to open them, but these are pretty crazy. But if you don't have that, you can find this stuff at, uh, depending on where you live, different stores or of course online. It's just a nutcracker and this is just a little uh, lobster crab pick. And uh, this is a rolling pin to get the annoying meat out of here. It's a fair amount of meat. Here's a cool little trick to quickly remove the tail meat. Just use two hands to squeeze the shell together to crack it, then hyperextend that crack and the meat should fall right out the bottom. One tail. Now, if you're dealing with heavyweights like these gorgy main lobsters, the best way to get at the claw meat is through sheer brute force. Some good old steel. Lightly. Well, light-ish sheer brute force because we don't want to damage the meat. Now, before we go on to building the sandwiches with this extracted meat that we worked That's oh right. so hard on, like any other local specialty, there are many ways to eat and prepare a lobster roll. We're going to focus on two styles. One that you might call a Maine lobster roll, and the other a Connecticut or New England style lobster roll. Let's start with the Maine. Get it, Maine? <laughs> that was dumb. To a large bowl, add in your cubed lobster chunks, followed by some diced celery, lemon juice, Dijon mustard, mayo, pepper, salt, and a tiny pinch of cayenne pepper. Pequeño. It's optional, but I think it brings out a nice little note in the lobster. Now grab your handy dandy lobster spoon that you definitely have and give everything a mix. Toasted bun in hand, squeeze a line of mayonnaise down the middle, then top with a piece or two of crisp bib lettuce. Now pile that lobster salad on sky high and boom. That, my friends, is an OG main lobster roll. This next joint is a little more simple. Now, many New Englanders prefer their lobster rolls plain Jane to let the lobster meat flavor really shine through. All that's needed for this preparation is some well-cooked lobster, check, a well-toasted top split bun, check, and drawn butter, aka just melted butter. Uh, definitely check. And be liberal with that melted butter. It's okay to be a little extra when the lobster is this tasty. Finish with a squeeze of fresh lemon juice to cut through the fat and make it rain chives. That part is totally optional, but I thought it needed a little bit of color, so yeah, chives. Look at that, that is a thing of beauty. I honestly love the idea of a lobster roll. You're taking a fancy luxe ingredient and totally making it an every man sandwich. Something that might be thought of as pretentious is something that everyone can enjoy and understand when it's in a lobster roll. After all, the lobster roll was invented by fishermen to use up the day's unsold catch, and uh, if it's good enough for those hard ass lobster men who caught these things, it's good enough for me. On this side, we have our classic main style lobster roll served cold. On this side, we have our Connecticut, New England, whatever you want to call it, they also serve this in Maine, style lobster roll, just drawn butter. So, let's see which one I like more. I'm gonna come back to you. 
I'm a little scared of that one. That is hands down the best lobster I've ever had in my life. It tastes like the ocean, and whenever I hear people say that, I'm always like, that's kind of gnarly, but in the best way possible, this thing came off the boat literally two days ago. I didn't think I was gonna be the biggest fan of the coldness of it, but it works really, really well. And with the soft and kind of crunchy, toasted, buttery roll, very balanced. Okay, on to the heart attack edition. I'm saying that like I'm like, like not stoked, but I'm very stoked. Mmm. Wow. Oh man. You can, I mean, you could taste the lobster really well in both, but this one is just, you know, this is the purest version of a lobster roll. Straight up drawn butter. Some people like a little mayo underneath. This is just drawn butter with some chives. You really taste it all. This thing's awesome. I don't know why I said I'm gonna choose my favorite. Going into this, I thought I was gonna like this one because like I said, I'm a purist type guy, but I gotta, I gotta keep it real. And this isn't just to tickle my mainers out there, but I'm in love with the uh, main, with the cold salad. They're both fantastic in their own ways, but there's just something about this combination that just works really, really, really well, especially when the bun itself is a little warm too, to contrast the coldness. I'm gonna go ahead and do one of these. I hope this video inspired you to seek out your own lops daddy and get to work. Next episode, we are staying on the East Coast, heading down South just a wee bit, heading to Maryland. You know the drill, if you think you know what we're gonna make, Comment it below. Take care, cook hard, and we'll see you in the next episode.